When standing off against the Alien Queen after discovering it had stowed away onto the Sulaco, Ellen Ripley was able to use one of the USCM's power loaders to fight the monstrous Xenomorph face to face and save the other survivors of the mission in the process. Though the machine's actual intent for use within the core is not quite intense, and developed for practice in quickly and efficiently assisting the USCM for field missions and other day-to-day -day use. The Caterpillar P5000 powered workloader, as described in the Colonial Marines tech manual, was selected by the US Colonial Marines as their prime loader for vehicle logistics and support operations. Configured as an anthropomorphic exoskeletal power frame, the P5000 offers unprecedented flexibility when handling ordnance and cargo during rough field operations or when conducting heavy maintenance away from fixed workshops. Capable of fine manipulating loads up to 4,000 kilograms, the P5000 is a rugged and reliable alternative to conventional forklifts, rigs, and cranes. The chassis of a P5000 is a reinforced steel framework with two upper load bearing points for the arms. A hydrogen fuel cell is mounted on the back of the frame, providing up to 65 kilowatts of power for the loader. The articulated legs are attached by two semi-universal bearings to either side of the chassis, allowing up to 60 degrees of hip swivel movement. Just below these are a set of knee bearings. Leg motions at the hip are controlled by a pair of 20 kilowatt linear motors actuated via a fast feedback loop slave to the operator's movements. Below the hip, hydraulic actuators extend from the main load-bearing points to the aft sections of the legs, providing fore and aft movement at the knee joints, while pitch control is handled by a second series of actuators at the ankles. To prevent toppling while stationary and under load, the chassis is gyro-stabilized. These gyros can be rotated rapidly out of phase in order to decouple the chassis stabilization systems along determined axis of motion, and to provide the necessary stability required for bipedal movement. The arms are attached to the very top of the chassis by a pair of complex universal bearings stressed to operate under loadings of up to 4,000 kilograms. Arm motions in the Y and Z axes are controlled by linear motors, while movement in the X axis and at the elbows is powered by a series of hydraulic actuators. The limbs terminate at a set of vice manipulators configured to handle standard P60 and O26 type pallet grids and capable of up to 360 degree rotation. Manipulator function is controlled from an operator hand grip slash joystick combination on the inside of each limb. Attachment points for maintenance tools such as cutters or welders are situated on the manipulators. To work the power loader, the operator first backs into the machine buckling themselves with the webbing harness. A roll cage is pulled down to provide protection for the head and torso while feet are snapped into straps. Power up and systems diagnostics are handled by a punch keypad built into the operator's hand grips. When powered up, the loader is slaved into the operator's limb movements, duplicating their walking and lifting motions almost exactly. Response time to the operator's input is almost instantaneous, while sophisticated computer controls dampen any system-induced twitches or oscillations that arise out of involuntary operator movement. Though simple in principle, considerable practice is required to use a power loader safely and efficiently, and the equivalent of a Class II civilian cargo handling license is needed to operate them in USCM service. To operate a loader requires sureness and economy of movement, since hesitancy and exaggerated motion tend to place undue stress on the loading bearing points. Training to use a power loader takes about six weeks of simulator and hands-on experience, though this is extended to eight weeks to qualify for USCM personnel and includes training in rough field operation. True to the excruciating details brought into the world of James Cameron's Aliens, one of the curious notes about the P5000 is its design under Caterpillar Incorporated, an actual developer and manufacturer of construction and mining equipment. Do you think such a machine would have some practical use if developed for real operations, or is it best to battle xenomorphs in fiction? Comment below and let me know your thoughts. And as always, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, and if you like this video, please be sure to give it a like. And you can also hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest videos from Alien Theory. If there's an Alien Universe topic you'd like to see covered, I'd love to hear your suggestion below and make sure to cover as much as I can. You can also follow Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and Alien Theory YT on Facebook for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.